Your new edit got stolen again. This is so unfair, you think. What am I gonna do about this? And then you see it. This awesome 3D outro. That's it. I'm gonna show all of these CapCut editors. So you go ahead, open After Effects, ready to add this amazing outro to your edit, only to realize that you have no clue how to make it. If only there was someone who could show me. Don't worry, because today I will show you step by step how to make this 3D outro, so you can look professional and stop people from stealing your edits. And to make it a bit easier for you, we will first start by adding the background, and after that the text so you don't get confused during the process. Let's start by creating our project. Once you're in After Effects, click on New Composition, and for the resolution, I highly recommend you use the same as in your edits. That way, you can reuse the outro and don't have to make it over and over for every edit. Same goes for the frame rate, and my duration is gonna be 2 seconds. If you want a longer outro, you can go for more. Press on OK, and for the background, I'm gonna use this free overlay that I found on YouTube. I will leave you the exact one I used in the description. Because the background is the foundation of our outro, we're gonna edit first. Make sure you right-click onto the layer, go to Transform, and then select fit to comp height. That way we can get rid of these black bars at the top and bottom. I personally want my outro to be in red and to change the background to red, I'm gonna go to my effects and presets and search for tint. Drag the normal tint effect onto your layer and map the white from being white to red or whatever color you want it to be in. Then press on okay and to make it a bit brighter, we're next gonna add deep glow. Go to your effects and presets and search for deep glow. Then drag it onto your layer, put the radius from 500 to 650 and the exposure from one to 0 0.5. And I also want the background to be brighter around the edges. So I'm gonna search for CC vignette, drag it onto my background, then change the amount from being 100 to negative 1000, and the angle of view I'm gonna put to 25. Lastly, which is gonna be important later, we're gonna search for motion tile, drag it below all the other effects, and then put the output height from 100 to 250, and enable the check mark that says mirror edges. Now that we're set with the main background, I also wanna add some more cool effects. For example, this nice fire overlay. Unfortunately, I couldn't find a good one on YouTube, but you can try searching yourself, or download the one I used from my Discord server. Very important, drag it above our main background. Then again, right click, go to transform, and click on fit to comp height. This one's a bit bright, so I'm gonna press T on my keyboard and put the opacity from 50 down to 60. Then I'm gonna copy the tint effect that we used earlier by clicking on it and then pressing Ctrl and C and also apply it to the fire particles by clicking on them and then pressing Ctrl and V. That way it fits better in. And lastly, I've seen a lot of people use this cool lightning effect. This one, again, I got from YouTube, so I'll leave you the link to the video in the description. Drag this one in between the fire and background, then right click, go to transform and select fit to comp height. And as you may realize, there's multiple lightnings in here. Just go ahead to the one that you like most, which in my case, I think the second one looks best. So I'm going to cut it out by pressing Ctrl, Shift and D. Delete everything that comes before and then just drag it to the start of my composition. I'm going to repeat that at the end. So after the lightning is finished, I'm going to cut it again and delete everything that comes after. To get rid of the black background, we're going to click onto our layer, go to toggle switches slash modes, and then put the mode from normal to screen. And because we also want the lightning to be in red, we're going to go back to the other layer, copy the tint effect by pressing Ctrl and C, and then also paste it onto the lightning layer. Once we're done with the outro, let's get to the important part, which is going to be adding our text. Start by heading to the top and select your text tool. Then click onto your composition and type in your name. Make sure you align the text to the middle of the screen and then search for the element effect. By the way, if you can't find this effect in your After Effects, you can get it from the free Discord server in the description. Before we apply this effect, which is gonna create this 3D text look, we have to go to the top, click on layer, then select new and press on solid. The settings don't matter, just press on okay and then drag the element effect on top of that solid layer. After that, it should be disappearing and we can now go to our effect controls and you can see the element plugin. Start by opening up custom layers, then go to custom text and masks and put the path layer one from none to selecting your text layer, which in my case is the second one, my name. After that's done, we can head back to the top and click on scene setup. As you can see, it will open up this extra window. And in here, we have to click on extrude. After that, you will see your text in this little preview. And to add some texture to it, because currently it looks pretty rough, we're going to click on presets, go to pro shaders two, then select metal and scroll down until we find the metal flake painted blue. Double click onto that. And you can see it will change the texture of our text. But in our case, the text has to be red because we want it to match with our outro. So click this button next to the extrusion model and then select the one we just applied. Scroll down until you find this textures tab and in here we're going to start by putting the reflectivity from 100% to 65%. Also we're going to put the normal bump from 12 to negative 5. Then go to the diffuse color right here under basic settings and change the color to a darker red, something like this. Press on OK and then for the color under reflectivity put a normal red. Once that's done we can press OK and then OK in the top right corner and our 3D text will appear in our main composition. We don't want the original white text to be in the way so go to the left and disable it. And if you don't scroll down to disable the subscribe button right now, 1 million CapCut editors will come for you to steal your edits. And because we don't want our 3D text to just be stiff in one position while our background is going crazy, we're gonna add a nice animation. For that, go back to your element effect and open the group 1. Then click on particle look, go to multi object and enable the check mark next to it. That will open up a whole new page of settings and in here we can change the overall appearance of our text. First thing we have to do is drag our time indicator to that place where we want our animation to be finished. In my case, I'm gonna go for 1 second and 10 frames, so around here. Then we're gonna set a key 
keyframe for the particle size, leave it at 10. X rotation and leave it at 0. Also the random rotation at the bottom, leave it at 0. Then displace and change the value to 0 0.25. Lastly, the Y scatter and also leave the value at 0. Now we're going to go to the beginning of our composition right here and play around with these values until you have a nice start for your animation. In my case, I'm going to put the particle size to 5, the X rotation to negative 60, my random rotation to 35, displace, very important, put that to 0, and the Y scatter I'm going to put to 0 0.25. Make sure you only change the values of these highlighted effects. If we now play the outro, you can see we have this animation, but it's kind of slow. So select the layer and press Z on your keyboard. This will reveal all of our keyframes. We're going to select them, right click, go to keyframe assistant, and then hit easy ease. Then select them one by one, open the graph editor, and copy my exact graph. We're going to start by pulling it up at the bottom, and then on the left, we'll kind of drag it towards here. If you have the flow plugin, you can use that too, but if you don't, you can just go ahead and then select the next keyframes as well. Open the graph editor and copy roughly the same graph. Make sure it's very similar to the one we just applied, and then do that for all the keyframes until you did all five. Now, when we play our animation, it will look way smoother, but the problem is our text is not sticking out at all. You can barely recognize it with the background. So let's add some text effects to change that. Start by heading back to your effects and presets and search for bevel alpha. Drag it onto the solid layer that you put the element effect on and leave the values how they are. And by the way, you can scroll to the top and hide the element plugin because we don't need it anymore. Next effect is going to be deep glow. So search for it and then drag it onto the solid layer. This time reduce the radius to 400 and the exposure to 0.85. Next up, we got drop shadow. And like the name already says, it will add a shadow behind our text. So apply it to your element layer and do that twice because we want to have that effect twice. Now you should have drop shadow one and drop shadow two. We're going to start with the first one, put the opacity from 50 to 100 and the rest is going to stay how it is. But for the second drop shadow, we're going to put the opacity to 100 and then for the shadow color, select the dark red, press on OK and then put the distance from five to zero. The softness we're going to put from zero to 150 and that will add some more depth. I do want my text to be a bit bigger. So I'm going to select the solid layer, press S and then increase the value till it fits my expectation. Last step before we finish our outro is going to be adding some cool effects to the beginning. And to add our effects, we're going to make new adjustment layers. Head to the top, click on layer, select new, and then press on adjustment layer. Now we have to duplicate this adjustment layer four times so that we get a total of five adjustment layers. Just press Ctrl and D on your keyboard four times and you will end up with five adjustment layers. The first one we're going to use to bring in some more movement. So go to your effects and presets and search for S underscore shake. Drag it onto the bottom adjustment layer and go back to the beginning of your composition. Inside the effect controls, we're going to put the amplitude from one to 0 0.7 and the frequency from eight to three. Also important, enable the motion blur, set a keyframe for the amplitude, and then go ahead to where you want your animation to be finished, in my case, around one second. Once we're here, we're gonna put the amplitude from 0 0.7 to zero, then press U, select both the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. And we're gonna copy the same graph that we used earlier for the animation of our text. So something like this. Close the graph editor. And the next thing we wanna add is a warp. So go to your effects and presets and search for warp. Use the normal one and drag it onto the second adjustment layer. Put the warp style from arc to fisheye and set a keyframe at the current frame for the bend. Put it from 50 to zero, then go back to the beginning and put the bend to negative 50. Again, press Z on your keyboard, select both the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Open the graph editor. And like before, we're gonna copy this exact graph that we used on all of our other animations. And this is gonna be the exact same for all of our adjustment layers. So I'm gonna stop saying that because I don't wanna annoy you. Make sure you copy this exact graph for all upcoming effects. For the third adjustment layer, we're also gonna add warp, but instead of fish eye, this time we're gonna select twist. Set a keyframe at the beginning and put the bend to 70. Then go one second ahead to all our other keyframes and put the bend from 70 down to zero. After you applied the graph I showed you earlier to this effect as well, we're gonna search for BBC ripple dissolve. Drag it onto the fourth adjustment layer. And before we drag it onto the adjustment layer, make sure you cut it right here by pressing Control Shift and D. If you don't do that, your After Effects might crash. And now drag the BBC effect onto the fourth adjustment layer. Put the height from 30 down to 15. And the light color, we're gonna change from yellow to a bit brighter red, something like this. Press on OK. And the last effect is gonna be BBC lens blur OBS. Drag it onto the top adjustment layer this time and set a keyframe at one second for the iris scale and put the value from 15 down to zero. Then go to the gamma and instead of 220, we're gonna put in 1000. Again, go to the beginning of your adjustment layer and put the iris scale from zero to 10. One last time, press U, select both the keyframes, right click, go to keyframe assistant and hit easy ease. Then open the graph editor and copy this exact graph. Before I forget, click on toggle switches slash modes and make sure you enable motion blur, which is this button right here for all the layers that will just ensure some more smoothness. And if your animation ends a bit too early and it looks stiff, click onto your solid layer, press U and then stretch out all the keyframes we created earlier for the animation till the very end. Now you can render the outro and you will be safe from CapCut editors. If this video helped you, you have to subscribe and for every like you will get one new follower. Thank you for watching and see you next time.